Here we go. 4.1, more nonlinear functions and their graphs. So what are we doing here? We're going to be talking about terminology, about polynomial functions, finding extrema of a function, identifying symmetry of a graph, and determine if a function is even, odd. I should have said odd. Odd, even, or neither. All right, what's an extrema? Here you are. Extrema are your extreme highs and lows of your graph, okay? <laughs> or your life, okay? A local maximum, a maximum is a maximum value in a given interval on a polynomial. So if you notice right here, we have a local maximum here and we have a local maximum here, okay? The reason why is because it's showing a point of where it's increasing then decreasing. So I had some high at some point. Does that make sense? Okay, a local minimum, I'm gonna box it. Yep. It's showing where I decrease then I increase, okay? You can have multiple of them. Okay, in some books, you may see the words relative instead of local, but they mean the same thing. All right, next, your global maximum. Your global is saying, uh, what is overall the highest point? Global, does that make sense? Can't go past the globe, so. Huh? Um, I guess, in a sense, but uh, because so functions have... We, are, we have to use the correct vocabulary between local and global, okay? Another word for global is absolute. So that's a synonym went for uh, global. It would be absolute. All right. How do you feel so far about extrema? People on the phones? Pay attention. Okay. All right. Perfect. So really quick, the graph shows the monthly um, average high temperatures at Daytona Beach. And I want you to identify the absolute maximum. There we go. So our absolute maximum took place at seven months and well, in month seven, and it is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Our absolute minimum. So we're looking for the lowest, right? Your absolute minimum would be your lowest, which took place in, me. I almost wrote January. Um, in month one, January, which is right below 70. So in the first month, and let's say 68 degrees. Probably. Yeah. 68, 69. Okay. And then what would be a, a local maximum if there is one? Exactly. Your local is the same as your absolute in this case. Okay. That's because it's the only point where it's increasing and then decreasing, right? Yeah. There could be. And your local one would be the also the absolute. Be absolute. No, you write what it is. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to rewrite the words. Mm -hmm. So it would be the seventh month and it would be 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Because it's the same. Because it's also your absolute. Okay. Now let's look at this graph and identify local extrema and absolute extrema. Okay, our local max. How many local maxes do I have? How many points of increase then decrease do I have? One, two, three. Just one. I increase on this little bitty interval, right? And then I decrease. So this is the only local max. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is my local max. That's not how you spell local. Local. Ah. So this is my local max. And now we're going to identify local minimums. Where will my local minimums be? So we have here. 
We have one here. And then we're decreasing. It looks like roughly mm, six and a half, seven. Six and a half ish. So these are my local minima. Okay. So then from there, what about absolute? We're going to highlight where the absolutes would be. That's the only absolute I have, right? Do I have an absolute max? I do not because what is the graph doing? It's going on forever. So there's going to be values that are larger than where that local maximum happens, right? Okay. So we only have an absolute minimum, not a absolute maximum. Okay, cool. All right, let's talk about it in terms of a word problem. Okay, um, so here it says the U.S. consumption of natural gas from 1965 to 1980 can be modeled by this function, which is a lot of numbers uh, that were made up for you, where x equals 6 corresponds to 1966 and x equals 20 um, to 1980, okay? So 66 is x equals 6. 20 is 20 years later from 1960, obviously. All right. So with that in mind, keep that in mind. That means that 1960 is 0 for this problem. So you have 1960 is saying x equals 0 is what this is telling you. Okay. And it wants you to evaluate f of 10. So it wants you to evaluate f of 10. f of 10 is saying you want 10 years later. So if I'm evaluating f of 10, I'm looking for in 1970 what took place. Does that make sense? Because that's 10 years from where I started. So this is going to lead me to finding f of 10. Okay. So that means I'm plugging in 10 to each one of these. Okay. Do we remember the power of tens? How the powers of tens work? I'm just adding the zeros, right? So if I'm ten to the fourth power, <laughs> what? <laughs> if it's ten to the fourth power, that means it's one and four zeros. Does that make sense? So it'd be ten thousand. And if I have ten thousand times this. That means all I'm doing is moving these decimal places. Does, it, does all of this ring bells to you? So we know if we plugged in F of 10 into here, this would be 10,000. 10,000 says that I'm going to move this decimal place four units to the right. So I go one, two, three, four. So that gives me 12 and 34. Make sense? Okay. Here, if I have 10 to the third, what is that? three times, so a thousand, so one, two, ignore that, uh, minus five and 689 thousandths, okay? 10 squared is gonna be 100, so I'm moving this two, which is gonna give me eight and 792 thousandths. And this was is gonna just be 10, so I'm moving it how many? Just once minus five and one hundred forty five thousand plus one. Okay, so I deliberately chose ten so that we could kind of practice some of those powers and rules of ten. Did that ring any of your bells? The powers and multiplying to move the pack to move your decimal. Yeah, good old middle schoolish. All right, so now we just got to add all this up, add and subtract. Let me grab a calculator. Show me a calculator. I'm going to go with Old Faithful. Bam. Old Faithful. Old Faithful. Okay. All right. So we have 12 and 34 hundreds. Uh oh. Plus, minus, shut up, Minus 5 and 689 thousandths. Plus, Eight and seven hundred and ninety-two thousandths 
minus five and 145 thousandths and plus one and 514. And we get 11.812 trillion cubic feet. A lot of gas. <laughs> so our answer is 11, roughly 11.8 trillion cubic feet of gas. I forgot the I a trillion. Unless I spelled it wrong in my notes. That was like spell trillion, right? Trillion, trillion, ion, trillion? Yes. I think I spelled it right. Uh, if I didn't, Microsoft failed me. Okay. All right, so if I was to graph this and analyze it, we would be able to see the growth and what this would look like. So I'm gonna go ahead. I don't know why I put so many decimals in this. I do know why, but in hindsight, I'm kind of resenting it. Are you made of it? Well, don't you see the numbers? One, two, three, four. I didn't realize that until it was like, so creative, right? I know. Um, all right, so now we're gonna look at this graph. So we have, uh, you know what how could I get rid of all these decimals I could if I multiplied everything by a thousand I'm gonna multiply everything by a thousand so we have one and one two three four x to the fourth minus how did I forget seven, guys? <laughs> Six, eight, nine. Pretend that there was a seven there. X to the third. I know. You gotta roll with the punches. Plus, uh, where are we at? I told you I was trying. She just want me to 87. And 92x squared. And then minus, in case y'all are wondering, I multiplied everything by a thousand so that I wouldn't have to write extra stuff. The extra zeros. Plus 15, 14. And now I realize I got to change these numbers. I didn't feel like writing all that extra stuff. All right. So as you can see, the calculator is thinking and thinking. And it's like, I can't show you this. I'm like, why not, calculator? Well, because your window needs to be changed. So I'm going to have to adjust my window to, in order to see what I need to see. So notice here we had 6, 20, and 5. We had 0. 0.4, 0. 0.8, and 1, 0.1. Um, since I increased everything, I'm still going to keep 6, 20, and 5 but I'm gonna increase these values because I multiplied everything by a thousand. So because I multiply everything by a thousand, I'm gonna switch this to 400, 800, and 100. And when I hit graph, it's gonna think. It's still thinking. Let's see if that worked. It didn't work, oh no. So then I'm like, well, some's not right with my numbers. I need zoom out, zoom in. If all is fails, notice how as I keep going, it didn't work. So I'm like, let's zoom out. Zoom out. Show me my graph. Did I press in? I did. Stop graphing. Zoom out. That was three. Uh, Old Faithful is really slow. I should have used the newer calculator. Be like Look at this. Look at my calculator, guys. It is just is mad. No. I just wanted you to see a graph, even that even though it's complicated. It did not like me. Zoom fit. Let's see what it does. It's gonna still get mad and angry. This is how you know the calculator gets angry when it starts making the really fast lines. <gasps> it's coming. She's trying. All right. So she graphed something for me. I'm like, but I can't do the whole thing. 
And when I go look at the window, these are the values that I have. I have 11, 14.75. Um, I said I wanted you to zoom out a little bit more than that. So we're going to change it to 6 and 20 and see what she does. And then I have really big numbers because I multiply by larger powers. And I didn't think about that. Let's see. There it goes. Still zooming and thinking in life. But as you can see, you just play with it. Have I given up? Nope. There she blows. Yeah. Finally. So as you can see the graph, you can see the curve. You can see how the values are increasing. So what does this tell us about America over time? What are we doing? We're using a lot of gas. Okay. So in this case, our local extrema and interpret. So if we're looking for our max, do we have a, our max doesn't exist, right? But we do have a min, a local min. Extrema means max and min. So I'm going to go to zoom, not zoom. I'm going to go to second trace and I'm going to look for a minimum. You're going to get your little spider. And your spider is going to crawl. What you're looking at as the spider moves are your Y values. So notice how my Y values right here, I can see when they're increasing and I can see when, as they increase, I can see when they are decreasing and then when they start to increase again. So I can see the different values here. So I'm, I can see I'm low here and then I'm gonna go to like, I'm above the X axis area and like, let's see, is there a minimum there? So painters to the patterns is, yeah, there's a minimum here. At three, your minimum is 708, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so there is a local minimum at X equals three. So in 1963, that's when the minimum gas was utilized. Okay, and that's just how you read the graph and play with the calculator. There's your real world and technology example. All right. Moving on. Next, we have even and odd functions. Even and odd functions. Um, even functions. Even functions are even with the y-axis. Does this ring a bell? You kind of remember this from algebra two a little bit. They're even with the y-axis, and your um, odd functions they have origin symmetry. They're going to go through the origin. They or rotate. So with um, even functions on a graph. They should be symmetrical with the y-axis. An odd function on the graph, it should have rotational or origin symmetry, which means that if I was to turn this upside down, it would still look the same, okay? Now, function-wise, you're plugging in and evaluating. So you're evaluating two parts of the function. So you have the original function itself, and you're gonna evaluate f of negative x, and you're gonna evaluate negative f of x. And depending on how they look and what, what ends up matching up, if f of negative x equals f of x, then it's an even function. If f of negative x equals negative f of x, then it's an odd function. So that's how you would find it algebraically. Graphically, clearly just graph and analyze. Okay. So looking at it as a table, if I look at this table, I have zero. I have negative two, negative one, one, two. And these are symmetrical of one another. Well, in some sense, it looks like they are. Is it starting off even? Obviously, this is my middle. And are my Y values symmetrical? Are they equal? Are they even? This is a positive eight, and this is a negative eight. So are they equal? Yes, because they're Oh, because there's equal means that they would both be eight or oh, both be three. No. no, no, they're not. So that eliminates even. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is my original y. Now, if I was to find negative y, negative y means that I'm changing these values. So this would become negative eight negative three, still zero, positive three, and positive eight. That's negative y. And would that be the same if I was also to change the x's? Would they end up being exactly the same? 
would I be recreating the same graph? So if I change the X's along changing the Y's, are they the same? So this would be positive two, this would be positive one, zero, negative one, and negative two. Does that go back to being the exact same graph from the beginning? Changing the X and changing the Y's creates the same graph. Does that make sense? So because of that, that makes this an odd function. If I change the X and change the Y and I get the same picture, that makes it odd. Yes, can we see that? Because this is the this is our original, just backwards, right? Okay. Now let's look at it as a graph. So as a graph here, I clearly can see that this is what even. Why is it even? It's symmetrical with the y-axis. So this is an even function. Yay, nay, maybe so. Okay, you believe, you believe it? Good. All right, now we're going to talk about it from a function perspective. From a function perspective, you're going to do two things. You're going to find f of negative x, and you're going to find negative f of x. Which one you find depends on the power of your highest exponent. So in this case, our highest exponent is 4. 4, and 4 is even. Because four is even, I'm only going to test this side. Does that make sense? If it had been an odd, then I would do both. Okay? I only have to do this one because it's even. If it's odd, you have to do both. All right? So when I, when I change the values of the x's, that means instead of positive x's, they now become negative x's. So we have three parentheses negative x to the fourth plus seven parentheses, negative x squared minus one. If I come back to the original graph, then it's even. A negative times a negative times a negative times a negative is a positive, so three x to the four. A negative times a negative is a positive. Is there any change from our original to this? And the answer is no, there's no change, so yay. It's a So therefore, it's an even function. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right. So it says f is the square root function. So f equals the square root of x. Is that even, odd, or neither? You can think of, it would be neither. If you think about it graphically, remember our square root function does this, right? And it goes through the origin, but if I rotate that 180 degrees, is it gonna look the same? No. Does it have a happy friend on this side? No. Okay. All right, so there is an exit ticket for all who paid attention today. Oh, even, odd, even, even. Okay, so on a piece of paper, take out, write your name. You're turning it in. So for people who paid attention, here you go. You can use your notes, just can't use your friends. So take out a piece of paper, write your name, number it one through five. Number one is a review question of vocabulary that you should have prior to this. What is a coefficient? What is a degree? Wait, exit ticket? No, no, not the origin? Exit ticket. Exit. You're going to give it to me as you exit. Wait, exit. It says, which part? On the first one? 